This is how our plants grow and defend themselves. Okay, they have this incredible arsenal of chemistry, but they can't make the chemistry if the minerals aren't there. And so this is what we compromise in our plants. If our bird's getting sick, it's because something isn't in the plant, didn't get put together right, so that whatever part went into the grain, it's not in it. Okay, so you can begin to see how incredibly important this is for even, even us humans, anti-inflammatory. Every disease that you will ever develop will start with inflammation, every single one. Antiarthritic. So take a Motrin every day, huh? No Motrin. <laughs> okay. Anti-malaria, anti-tumor. Okay, we go down here. Inhibits cancer development. <coughs> and so you look at autoimmune diseases, cancer, antioxidants, over and over. If all this is in our plants, why are people sick? There you have it. Not answer that. What's that? Because it's not in there is what you're saying. It's exactly right, Emil. It's not in our plants. Because we haven't gone through the processes to make it. We've shortcutted it in agriculture. We've sidestepped all the details. And we just said, let's grow more plant mass. Let's shove out NPK. Don't worry about the trace minerals. Don't worry about the soil biology. Let's nuke them. They're just in the way. Let's not even worry about that. That's like extra work. Okay, but when you mess up the coordination between the biology, the soil, and the plant, all this stuff doesn't happen. We would not be getting sick at the rate that we get sick if these things were happening. Anti-inflammatory, again, we go through all these compounds over and over and over again. Prevents cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes. These three right here, number one, two, and three, in our health factors. And this little guy that comes right off here off this carotenoid, or this carotene, which is a tetraterpene, can do this. But for this to get made, I have to have all the components to do this. You mentioned earlier, you don't see any of this though in the, more, than, more in the organic than the first. No, because they don't farm with trace elements any better than the bad guys that grow in GMO crops and all this other stuff. They're taught to basically ignore this stuff and get sources of NPK because everybody judges the volume that you produce, not the content of what you produce. And that's where we've gotten into as a society is we've learned to grow volume at the expense of quality. But when we do that, it takes a lot of chemicals, a lot of fungicides, a lot of insecticides, a lot of nematicides, to keep that plant alive through harvest because nature says this isn't complete and I'm going to take it out. And so when we go through and we grow plants in an imbalanced method, we don't have any choice but to try to keep them alive if we're going to harvest something and get paid. And that's the problem that we've gotten to in, in agriculture is we've adopted so many shortcuts. So we are you saying that GMOs have no, they see no difference in the GMO plant versus something like just a regular, that's nothing genetically modified. If they can trace it down to that's what it takes to make this, what you're saying here, how come they can they see they don't know the difference, can't see a difference? Because they're not looking for this in those plants. What they measure is volume. Okay, can a GMO plant grow 250 bushel acre corn an acre? Absolutely. Can a conventional one grow 250 bushel corn? Absolutely. Guys get paid on bushels. Okay, if guys got paid on tetraterpenes, they'd be bankrupt. But we don't look for that. Nobody looks for this. But what we have is a system that's failing across the board because all we do is look at bushels. And when we start looking a little deeper, like what's the mineral content in this one versus this one? Uh-oh, there's a difference. What's the protein content? Uh-oh, there's a difference. Now I get into my plant secondary metabolites, which go into the millions. Uh-oh, I don't have it. I still have structure, I still have volume, but I don't have 
all of this stuff? Why would we have cancer at one and two and one and three if any of this stuff was intact? And the thing is, is unless an organic farmer, and it doesn't, the guy doesn't need to be organic to do this, okay? Organic has a label that says, I'm restricted on pesticide applications. I'm restricted on synthetic applications. But unless any farmer understands how I grow a plant, what the minerals in the plant do, what the biology is supposed to do, he's not going to grow a great plant. It takes an idiot to grow structure. It takes someone who understands plants to grow nutrition. And we all are going to get sick and die off a of structure because there's nothing in it or not enough in it. And what we need is nutrient content. And that's why with us, that's why we do this education is I'm not a fertilizer salesman. I'm an information guy. And it's like the, every problem that you guys inherit in your barns is a nutrient deficiency, period. Every one of them. So can you, can you plant your soils with cover crops? Like Absolutely. Is that, like, is that a pretty decent way of That's a, It's a great way because a cover crop is re-stimulating all kinds of microbes. Because when you look at a cover crop, it can be 8, 10, 15 different plants, different types of plants. We got grains, we got legumes, we got lentils, we got radishes. radishes and turnips, we got peas, we got them all. And what they're doing is they're stimulating microbes that haven't been stimulated in centuries. Okay, we're bringing stuff back to life. And then we turn them back into our soil as organic matter. And it's like, wow, I'm finally feeding something that creates life in my soil. Cover crops are a magnificent tool. Okay, and these plants have a lot of additions that they can add, but when a plant, when a soil sees nothing but grain, grain, hay, grain, grain, hay, and that's its rotation, the biology gets very narrow. The worst thing in the Midwest is it sees corn, 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 corn for 50 years. I mean, the, 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 the populations of microbes are like single digits. There's no diversity there. There's no balance. And so as we look at this stuff, plants have to have all of these components. They don't have to have just NPK. They gotta have 60, 70 minerals to do all this magic. And we haven't farmed that way for 70 years, 80 years. We've depleted our trace minerals. We've done everything short of nuclear holocaust in our soils to kill our microbes and we still grow plants because we're chemically and synthetically dependent. And when we produce plants, they don't have the components to throw all this together because it's in their intelligence, it's in that coding. Again, again, we go back to the gene and the epigenetic consequence. The gene says, do this, do all this. And if I short the resources, this stuff doesn't happen. So I'll give you a corn cylinder and you tell me if I'm doing a good job for you. Okay. We can look at the mineral content and as soon as we get a scanner we'll start scanning the amino acids, the vitamins. Well we got the amino acids in the first Okay. But we want to look at the different factors of really what's in here and what's usable in here. And and the people who can produce, I mean, I, I will tell you, you guys will see it in your lifetimes that stuff will get sold on nutrient content, not on volume. And if you don't know how to create nutrition, you won't find a market. So this becomes the problem is the genetic coding, the, the genetic intelligence is there to do all this. When we don't help that happen, we don't get it. And then we see the problems on our end. And so this is, this is the reason that we look at the farming side of this to produce our quality nutrition because you got to buy this somewhere. And 
in time, when your eggs are checked for quality, you'll be able to check your grains for quality. And you'll say, oh, oh, this one's got a lot of glyphosate in it. This one's got a lot of fungicide in it. This one has a lot of fusarium in it. Okay, I know those inputs are going to go into my bird's gut, they're going to alter the biology, they're going to create lots of toxins, and I'm going to have disease issues. I would rather skip this meal. And so, if we can look at that kind of stuff, then it forces the producers to either step up or go out of business. Because what they're producing on a subpar level is ultimately going to kill the consumers. Because we are not getting better in our health. We are getting worse in every category. Let me category. tell you something about weed seeds. Let me tell you something about weed seeds. Okay? It's probably, in fact, I would bet that the nutrient content in your weeds is better than some of your grain. Now, this is why. But they probably have some side effects. No, mm -hmm. they don't do this. It's Weed. Weed is a nature seed. Weed is a plant that accumulates and restructures minerals in your soil. And, and this is an interesting thing. I was reading some grazing journals, and they would turn cattle out. And they preferred to graze on the weeds, not on the grass. And of course, these guys go crazy because they go, these weeds are just a headache to us. Well, they got looking into the weed. The weed had way higher mineral and nutrient contents than the grass did. Those cows aren't stupid. They selected the best feed in the pasture. And so, is a weed seed a bad thing? No, it's a seed. I have a dairy farmer. He grows this barley. And he has all these weeds in here. And, and he, he goes, I don't know what I'm going to do with that barley. He said, gee, the, the field was a terrible year. I didn't get to it. He said, it's just full of weeds. And, and he said, I got weed seeds, half of it's weed seeds and half of it's barley. I said, Jim, you're the only one that cares if there's weed seeds in it. I said, you think your cow cares? I said, if you look at that weed, it's pulling up nutrition that your plant doesn't have. It's got the ability to take up more calcium or more phosphate and redistribute it through its system. Your plant doesn't have that. And if I bet you money, you can take any of those weed seeds and take them in and test them, and they'll be more nutritious than your barley. I said, so why don't you do yourself a favor, get over the image of perfectly clean barley, because everything you're going to put with your barley is going to be better than your barley and your cows will eat it just as good, if not better. So he goes out there, chops his whole field, puts it in, grinds it, puts it in his feed, and he goes, you know what, my cow slick up every bit of that. I said, it's more nutrition in your weed seeds than there is in your barley. So do you 